All right, it is 8.05, so I'm going to begin. I am taping, so welcome to day 14 of the Rankin Technical College Online AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies class for fall 2023. All right, today, as it says here, we're going to be building a simple landing page that we will add some CSS to it to make it a responsive web design page. It's not going to be perfect. Everything that you do in here, you're constantly tweaking it. It's just something I put, I threw together in a, in a few minutes, okay? Now, I want to change this around. I want to do this first as far as discussing what we'll be doing for the next three weeks because I just want to be transparent and I want people to know. All right, so really, Today is the last day. Today and Monday will be the last days that we're going to spend any time on responsive web design itself. So in other words, we're done with this whole section here. Now with this next section, the plan is today, I'm, I'm not going to meet that long today. It's however long it's going to take this landing page. That's all we're going to do because I'm I'm redoing the responsive web design page that I want to do for you next week. I'm in the middle of redoing it right now, and that's what we're going to do together on Monday of next week. All right. And if that doesn't take the whole period, that's fine. Then we will jump right into chapter nine and talk about Flexbox. All right. Again, we are skipping chapter 10. So the plan is between Monday and Tuesday of next week, between those two days, we will go and do an entire website, maybe three pages. There'll be a responsive web design website. Then we'll go over chapter 10, all right? And we will go over the um, Halloween exercise. I'm sorry, chapter nine, I apologize. We're not doing chapter 10. Chapter nine, and we'll do the Halloween exercise for chapter nine. Then the plan is at least on Wednesday of next week, I'll give you one of these pretests, and maybe we'll do it differently. Maybe we'll just do it all together, all right, you know, right, right from the start. But it's not, again, it'll be very similar to what you'll be taking for an actual test next Thursday. Friday will then be our typical lab day, all right? Again, we are skipping chapter 10, all right? And then the following week, so not next week, but the week that follows, we're going to finish up most of this book. All right. Now, there's there's good news and bad news about this. The good news is this whole thing in here. I don't plan on giving you any any hands on tests, nothing in here. All right. Um, also, I plan on for 11 through 15 and 18, but 11 through 15. I will do with you again the Halloween exercises, but the shape up ones for chapters 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, they will be optional. Literally meaning you don't have to do them if you don't want to. If you do them, any points you get will be added on to the points you currently have. All right, so even if you do it and get half of it right, you'll get five extra points, but you don't have to. All right. So what I plan on doing, not next week, but the following week, the following two weeks are both finishing this book and sprinkling in there a few lectures where we're going to go over Bootstrap. <clears throat> bootstrap, in many ways, it's kind of like CSS on steroids. And I'm not being funny or anything else, but it allows you to do some things that it would be very hard to do without using Bootstrap or some other system like that, some framework like that. So we're going to do that. Now you will have at least one Bootstrap test. Before we have that, again, we will have a pretest. And when you take that test, all right, when you take that test, um, you're going to have more than one day to work on it. It's not that it's that long, but I want to make sure you've got time to work on it probably for your test on chapters eight and nine responsive web design that test i'm going to give you thursday i might you know give it out to you on thursday and give you till sunday to finish it all right we'll see how everything goes next week but the plan is again next week chapters eight and nine the following two weeks chapters 11 through 18 and 
getting through Bootstrap. Then after that, we'll take the book that you're currently using, the one I've got on the screen here, we'll put it aside, and for the last approximately 50 days of the class, will be all about JavaScript and programming. And what we will do eventually is we'll build a full-fledged website that not only will have in it HTML and CSS, but it'll have JavaScript in it, so it'll be an interactive website. All right, and another thing that we're going to do with that is we're going to literally take that uh, website that we create and we'll deploy it to the Internet. So if you wanted to show other people, you'd be able to do that. All right, just again, so you have some kind of an idea and I'll, I'll bring this up again. All right, but but people have said, well, you know, you always do this on this day. You always do this on this. Not necessarily. We had our first test on a Thursday. We had our second test on a Monday. You're going to get your next test also on a Thursday, but I don't know what, when you get a test for uh, bootstrap. I don't know what day of the week it'll be. All right, so I'm not going to do any lecturing, like I said, out of the book today. All right, nothing at all. I'm just going to be building something and I will make sure that what I build. Um, I also am going to create a repo for it right away. So if you're more comfortable just watching, then do that. All right. And again, if you have not read chapter eight, I'd strongly encourage you to do so. If you have not read chapter nine by next Monday, I'd strongly encourage you to do so. All right, so with that said, I'm just gonna start building here. Now I did send right before class a, a file with an image in there. I'm gonna use that image. It's, it's just a simple logo for the, um, for the St. Louis Blues. So I'm going to do a save as right there and I'm just going to throw it out onto my desktop just so it's out there. All right, so there it is. All right, so this is going to be, as I mentioned, this is going to be a landing page. All right, so let me move all this stuff that I've been working on over here. I'm going to move it all over. And over here in the blank space on my screen, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm just going to call it what it is. So I'm going to call this folder landing page. All right, oh, looks like I already have one. That's okay. So let's see, where is the one I already have? There it is. Let's take that and just move it over to here. There we go. Now I'll be able to create a call landing page. Okay, so there that is. I'm going to immediately open it up. And before I even do anything with it, I'm going to right mouse click here and I'm going to choose Git Bash here. You've seen me do this quite a few times before. So I'm going to come in and immediately, there's nothing in here right now. So if I do a Git status, I'm going to get an error message. There's no Git folder in there. So I'm going to do a Git init. All right. And there's my folder. But if I still do a Git status, There's going to be nothing there because we haven't put anything in there yet, and that's okay. All right. Now, you know this already that I can go in and I can go in right now and open landing page inside of Visual Studio Code and add a couple folders and add some other stuff, or I can do it from right here. So, in other words, I can be right here and I can right mouse click and choose new folder and type in CSS. And then I can do it again, choose new folder and type in images. All right, so I now have two folders in there. They're both empty. There's that logo file that I just copied over to you guys. I'm going to right mouse click and drag it into my images folder and say copy it here. So in images now I've got that logo. OK, so that's what's in there right now. And that should be good enough for now. So I'm going to open this particular folder that I just created, I'm going to open it in code. All right, and as you can see, once I do that, there's my CSS folder with nothing in it. And there is my images folder and it has my logo in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here right there and I'm going to create my index.html file before I'm doing anything. All right, so that's first thing that I want to do in here. Okay, so the next thing 
then that I'm going to do in here is the way we always start these off. In other words, I'm going to put in an exclamation point and hit tab. OK, you've seen this again several times before. Nothing new here. And I'm making something mythical here that I'm calling. St. Louis Blues. News. All right, so that'll be the title. OK, now you have seen this kind of thing before. I don't have any style sheets right now, but I'm going to get some in just a minute. I'm going to grab one and I'm going to make one. OK, so. Let's see, let let's let's start here by. Doing this, I'm going to go out. I've shown you this before in our book. They talked about using that normalize.css file, which is just fine. But I'm going to go out and I'm going to Google here for Eric Myers. CSS reset because this again is another one. All right, so there it is right there. So I just clicked on the link for it. It will come up in a second. <clears throat> Hopefully. All right, there it is, and that's it right here. That's the whole file, so I'm going to grab this whole thing. And I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. All right. Now in my CSS folder right here, I'm going to create a new file that I'm going to call reset.css. And I'm going to paste that in. Now when you look in here, I'm not saying that every single thing that's in here is going to make sense. All right, but when you look, these are most of your CSS tags. I'm sorry, your HTML tags. HTML, body, div, span, h1, h2, paragraph, etc. So you can see, and there's some, there's plenty of tags we haven't even talked about yet. Some of which we will talk about, some of which we won't. But it's basically saying in here for virtually every HTML tag, make sure there's no margin associated with it, no padding associated with it, no border associated with it. Use the default font size. All right, it should inherit whatever that default font size is. And the vertical align baseline basically says that, you know, that you're going to see it. It's like when you have images and the like, they have things basically line up. Then we've got some other stuff in here. These are pretty much, most of these are HTML5 specific things in here. All right, and we're telling them to display block. Now, I think that's redundant because they display block anyway, but as it says in there, if somebody is using an older browser, it may not recognize that as being a newer tag. That would have to be a pretty old browser, just so you know. All right, we're saying that the in the body, the line height will be at 100%, okay? Remember that with line height, what that does is that's the space between each line. So if we wanted to have a little more space between each line in a paragraph, for example, we could make it 1.2 or something like that. All right. For our um, order lists and our unordered lists, list style none. OK, and that's mainly going to be more important for our unordered lists if we have any of those. I don't even think we're using any of those in here. All right. Don't do anything special with quotes in here is that's the best I can tell you. And the table, this won't make a lot of sense probably now, but not next week, but the following week we'll go over. I think it's chapter 11 and it's all on tables. All right, and all the all the collapse thing means is when you get to a certain size, you don't put a border collapse collapse in there. You're going to have weird looking borders and that's all there is. All right, so that's what's in there. So again, I shouldn't have to, but I'm going to go do a file save all in there anyway. All right, now we've talked about this before. I'm going to also come in here and in my CSS folder, I'm going to make another new file that I'm just going to call styles.css. That's usually what I call mine. Now, I like to make sure that this is working and that I can link up these files to my program. So all I'm going to do in here, I'm going to get rid of it in just a second, but I'm going to say body and I'm going to say here background, Red, 
that's it. I will get rid of this in just a moment. All right, but file again. And a save. And now I'm jumping back into my H into my HTML file. Now I want to add both of these files. I've mentioned this before. I can't say these kind of things too many times. If you're going to have a reset file and a non reset file like we have here, please make sure to put the reset file in first because normally your file is going to overwrite a lot of the things that are in that reset file. So if I type in the word link, whoops, and I hit tab, it, well, that's because I typed it in wrong. But if I type in link and hit tab, you can see it sets everything up for me. So now I can just say CSS slash, and there's my reset. Okay. And then I can type in link again and hit tab. All right. And now I can put in my other one, which is my style, whoops, CSS. Um, CSS slash styles dot CSS. All right. So nothing exactly new right there. And the order in which you put this stuff does not matter. If you like to put your links way up at the top, you can do it. Most of the time, what you tend to see are the meta tags up there first. But again, everybody's different with that. All right, as far as what they do and how they do it, et cetera. All right, now, not that we have to do this, but I just wanted to show you something in here. So I'm going to come down in here and I'm going to add yet an, uh, a blank line, and then I'm going to go out to the internet. This is something I started to show you the other day, but we really didn't talk very much about it. I'm going to go out to fonts.google.com. All right, this is also known as Google Fonts. All right, and as you can see, there are currently 1,563 different fonts that are out there. All right, and I'm going to search for one, and the one I'm going to search for is Indie Flower. I'm hoping I put it in there correctly. Can't find it, of course not. Uh, All right, let's we'll just grab a different one. That's fine. So, you know, again, whoops, you want to start looking through here and you want to see if there's something that you're interested in. All right, some kind of a font here, and it doesn't matter what we choose. All right, so let's say that I, I'm going through this and I, I, I'll just look for a little bit, not real long, but uh, let's say this Roboto Mono. So I click on that. All right, and it shows you what it's going to look like. Okay. And as it says there, you can type there if you want to preview some of the text. And then what they have is these are different types that you can download in here. So you'll notice if you look, we've got a very, you know, of extra light, a light, uh, italic, a light, etc. Normally, when I do this, the way I normally do it. All right, and everybody's different when with the way they do these things. I typically select the regular, all right? And I go down and I try to find one that's bold. And there's the bold right there. And I select the bold, all right? Now, what they're saying here, if you look on the screen, if, you, if you're following where I am right here, where I've got the mouse going, it says, okay, this is the Roboto Mono. And these are the two styles of that that I'm using. Then if I want to bring these into my style sheet, there's two ways I can do it. One is using the at import that we haven't talked about yet. All right, the other one is to use a link, which is what we've been doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to highlight this. I'm just highlighting that whole thing that's in there. I think I can go down here and there's a, a copy right there as well. But I'm going to grab this and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go in and put it right here. Now it's going to be big. All right. So I will come in here and go to view and word wrap. And it's still going to be pretty big. So that's all of it right here. And what that did was it brought in Roboto Mono. I'm not using it yet. I'll have to put that into my CSS file. But the point is that is now available to me. I'm telling it to go out to the internet to https colon slash slash fonts.googleapis.com, et cetera, where you see all this stuff. All right. 
whoops. Now, not always, but a lot of times what people will do is they will grab one font from Google Fonts like I just did. All right, so they will grab one of those, okay, for maybe headings and then grab a different one. All right, grab a different one for for everything else. So like notice there's an add more style. So if I if I forgot something, I didn't. All right, but I can just go back here. I can search fonts. They used to have a thing up here. And I don't know if it's still here or not, but when you clicked on it, it would show you other fonts in the, you know, that you could use that would go well with it. I don't see it here right now, but it, it may be in here. I'm just not seeing it. All right, so I'm going to go back here again, right to where I was. Just to uh, to Google fonts right there and see if there's anything else that I'm interested in. All right. And you don't have to do this either, just so you know. All right, I'm just see this. I grab I'm going to grab this Rubik one. I don't know how these two will look together. I don't really care because this is just like more or less demonstration. And again, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab the regular. Right there, and I'm going to grab the bold 100. Now you can grab more of these if you want. You can grab different shades, so to speak, of these if you want to do so. That's totally fine. You can do this any way that you want to do it, but I'm just showing you in here an example of doing this. All right, so I'm going to go back again into my file right here, and I'm going to paste. So now I've got two of them. I've got that uh, the first one that we put in here, whatever the heck that was. All right, Roboto Mono, and this looks like it's a railway. OK, and they're in the same family, so they they hopefully at least will look good together. We'll see. All right. Now, I'm not going to worry about putting those in or anything right now. I'm going to just leave those right there. And for the next few minutes, I'm just going to concentrate on creating the body of this thing. And the body really is not. There's a bit of typing in here. All right. There's probably going to be around 100 lines. And that's why I said <clears throat> That if you don't want to type in as you know with me as well, you don't have to. All right. Now, the other thing to realize, it does not matter with putting in this these Google fonts. It doesn't matter if you put those before or after your own font. All right. They don't, it really doesn't matter. Okay. I just put them down on the bottom. That's just the way that I do it. All right. You know, I, I was, you know, people are kind of wired a certain way that they do things in a certain manner. That's how I do them. All right. OK, so now I'm going to start typing. So I'm going to I'm going to basically put a lot of the stuff I do in here. I'm going to put inside of a div. All right. And remember, you might say, well, why are you doing it this way, et cetera? This is a single page, so I'm not worried about a nav section etc. I'm not going to worry about any of that stuff. All right, so I'm just going to put everything in here and I'm going to say ID equal container. And one of the reasons that I'm doing this and I'm putting that in there in a, in a container div is when we get to the point where we are working on, um, when we get to the point where we are working with Bootstrap, you're going to be using containers all over the place. All right, okay. Now, I am going to put a header in here, but it's going to be pretty simple. And I'm going to give it an ID. I'm just going to call it main header. Now, again, if I if I'm right here, if I'm saying something and you're like, well, duh, that's great. But if you don't understand, that's why I'm saying it. Did I have to give this an ID? The answer is no. But if I do have more than one header, in this document, all right, then I've given this one an ID. So main header is only going to be associated since this will be a one page site. It's only associated with everything that I put in between these two header tags. All right, so the first thing I'm going to put in here is an H1 tag, oops, an H1 tag. And I'm just going to say the Saint, oh boy, the Saint Louis. Blues news. All right, now I'm not going to run this. All you'd see would be the H1, but you would. 
Okay. And then let's come in here and we'll do with an image ID equal logo. That's that logo file that I just sent to you. All right. And the source, I could all type this all on one line, but I'm just typing it over multiple lines. It's in my images folder and it's the only image in there, so it makes it easy to, to grab. And as always, you should always put an alt tag in there. Now, since since right now, because of right now, I'm not going to be worrying about any CSS. I'm not worrying about it. I am going to put a width and a height in here, but I'm going to remove those later. All right. So I'm going to say in here width equals 80 and height equals 64. All right. Probably would work just fine even if I didn't have it in there, but that's what's in there. And in fact, you know what? I I wanted to. I want to make sure that this stays together. So I probably could even put the H1, you know, down here. I didn't even think of doing that. And sometimes the only way you learn how to do things or not do things is to just try them. All right. If for some reason this doesn't work or it looks funky or whatever, that's fine. I'm not worried about it. All right, but I am going to save this. And I'm going to bring it up. With live server. And there it is right now. It doesn't look like much of anything. You can see what we have in there. All right. Now, if I decide I don't want, I, mean, I want this to be down below that, for example, then I think at least I should be able to come in here and just end my H1 tag here and then remove this one. All right. So again, if I do that, I come up and look in here, you can see the difference. All right. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to remove in my styles.css file, I'm going to remove that background color. So again, this is what it looks like right now, and that's fine. All right. Also, just so you know, you know, I can keep doing this. That's at 500%. If I look at it at 100%, that's what it looks like right now. All right, but I'm blowing it up so that you're able to see everything I'm doing as I'm doing it. All right. Okay. So, so far, we now have this blank file, but in our index file, we did come in, we added a, we added um, a, a title, we added a reset file, we added our own style file, we added two different fonts, which we'll use later, and now we've come in in our body, and so far, we've just added a header. So like I said, we haven't really done too much so far. All right, but let's continue on anyway. All right. So like I said, in our body, we've got that. So we're, we're done with a header for now. So what's next? Well, again, how we do this, as I mentioned to you previously, is up to us. All right, I put a main in here next. Oops. All right, and let me get rid of this for now. And let me move this down. There we go. And this won't have very much in it, but I am going to put in here a div with an ID that's going to be equal to main text. You should always strive, and that is maybe the greatest name, but you should always strive to have in here, all right, when you create divs and you create your own classes, to at least come up with a name that is somewhat reminiscent of what you're trying to do with that, with the class itself or the ID itself. So I'm going to put an H2 tag in here, and all it's going to say is newsletter coming soon. That's it. Now I'm not going to, I'm going to save it, but I'm not going to run it again, because all you're going to see is, an, you're going to see the H1, you're going to see the logo, and then underneath that, you're going to see the H2. It's virtually the same thing I just showed you. All right. 
So that's what I'm putting in there. And now I'm going to come in and add some more stuff. All right. Now, the way that I'm the way that I did this. All right. The way that I did this is I set up a left side and a right side. All right. If you say I don't know what you mean, I mean the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen. And that's what I'm doing in here right now. So what I did was for this left side, I put it in a div and I gave it an ID and I named that ID left side. All right. And when I get done with this, I'm going to put in some text here. I'm going to make another div and that other div is going to say in it right side. All right. So right now I could put anything I wanted to put in here. I may have mentioned this to you before. I may not have. I don't remember. But if I wanted to just put in some what are, what's called lorem ipsum text, which is just junk text, I can come in here and I can put in a P tag just like this. And I can, for example, if I wanted to put 100 words in here, I could put in lorem 100 and boom, you can see what it gives me. All right, so that's a very fast way to bring in some text and there's literally nothing wrong with doing that. One thing you don't want to do, though, is, for example, in your electronic portfolio, you don't ever want to put Lipsum text in there because that's a portfolio about you. All right, but for what we're doing, that would be fine. But one thing I found, and I didn't know it until I checked it out, is there's also something that's called hockey lipsum. All right, and if I click on the hop, hockey lipsum, okay, I want four paragraphs. You know, click, let's go. All right. Put the tape on it, but I thought that was how we did it. It's been a while since I've looked at this. So how many lines, paragraphs are you going to? Four. Well, that's nice. Unless this isn't, isn't working anymore, but how many sentences? I don't know if that's sentences per paragraph or what. So let's try three, four. Let's go. OK, it gave me some junk in there. I don't like the way it's doing this, so I'm going to grab. This is when I grabbed it before. I'm just going to put the stuff in here manually. All right. All right, now I've actually got four different paragraphs, but I don't want you to have to watch me type four paragraphs. That's a waste of your time and a waste of my time. So I will copy this paragraph. And I'll put it in there four times. All right, and that is everything that I want in that div. Now again, since there's been no formatting done to this whatsoever so far, it's not going to look very nice. OK, that doesn't look very good, but you can see it right now. OK, and. You know, I don't even have any breaks in here, etc. So it though there are four paragraphs, but it looks like just it, when it gets big enough, especially it's like one big mess. All right. OK, so we've got in our four paragraphs now, so now I'm going to put in another div. And this is going to be the right hand side. I think I just, what did I call this one? Left side, so I'll call this one right side, not right hand side. Okay, 
Now, what I want to put in here, and I'm going to explain all of it, all right, but what I want to put in here literally is what's called a form. And if you say, I don't know what that is, my guess is you're wrong, you do. Because probably at one time or another, most if not all of you, all right, we're at a website where you were maybe shown a form and asked to register for something or whatever. We're going to make a very simple form. This is something, again, that will be discussed in a later chapter, but it gives me the chance to at least introduce it to you right now. And that's all I'm trying to do. All right, I'm going to put a div within a div, which is totally legal. Now I'm going to put my form in here. And I just called it contact. All right, again, what I call it is totally up to me, as you as you probably know. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here something that's called a legend. All right, so let me put it in. And I'm not sure why I did it this way, but I put a couple of spaces in here. All right, and I said sign up. For our newsletter now. OK, so far there's not much in there, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create four form fields. What does that mean? That means that I'm going to have four fields. Each field will have a label followed by a box that's called a text box. The label will say, for example, first name, and then in the text box, I can put someone's first name. Then I'll have last name, then I'll have email, and then I'll have phone. So I'm putting in four of these and I'm going to put each one of them within their own div. And again, do you have to do that? No, but what you're going to see is when we start working with Bootstrap and Bootstrap has really good support for forms, this is usually the way it's done. So I'm trying to just gradually get you into the mindset of how this stuff is going to be. Now, looking at this, everything that I just put in here may make no sense. So let's break it down and just talk about it for a moment. Again, this is going to be a label and it's going to say first name and it'll have an asterisk next to it. If you don't know what the asterisk is, you will in about two minutes. All right, now notice it says four equals F name and that F name is the same name that I have here. What that will do is if we are, once the form is on the screen, if we click the label that says first name, it'll put us inside of the text box for the first name. That's just considered proper etiquette to do that. All right. And so what you see in blue now, this is the actual text box that is going to appear on the form. All right. It is of type text. There's other types. But that just means that it's going to be a single line of text that I'm going to put in there. And you'll notice that it says ID equals F name and it says name equal F name. Are those two things all do they always have the same name? Almost always. It depends on the, the type of the thing that you're putting in here, but most of the time they'll have the same name. So what are they? Well, ID is what you think it is. So if I go into my CSS and I do pound F name, 
I could take that, you know, what goes in there and I could change the font size or the color or whatever. So that's this works on the client side, which is what we're doing this semester. All right. And it gives us an ID. This is what you work on when you take the AWD 1111 class, which is database driven website development one. That's the one that you do when you're working on the server side. All right, so the ID is for the client side. The name is for the server side. If that makes little to no sense to you right now, please don't let it bother you. It's totally OK. I'm just trying to explain a couple things to you. That's really and truly all I'm trying to do in here. All right now to try to make our lives easier again so you don't have to watch me fumble as I'm typing. I'm going to copy here and I'm going to paste that in and now I'm going to create another one, but this will be L name for last name. All right. So if I save this right now. And if I bring it up in live server, that's what it looks like. So sign up for our newsletter now and the first name and the last name. You can see it doesn't look probably that terrible, but it, there's no space between these, et cetera. That does, but it could look a lot worse than it does. All right. So let's add a third one here. All right, and this one is going to be for our email address. All right, and again, we can call this whatever we want. And you'll notice in here, we're going to change the type to email because with the advent of HTML5, which is what we're using, you can make the type email. So if we go in there and I type hello, for example, for the email, it's going to give me an error. It's going to say you don't have an at sign in there. So it, ex you know, it will do a certain amount of validation for me. All right. So even though this is type email, I can still call it email. It doesn't hurt anything. All right. So I now have three of these things in here. All right, I'm going to add one more. And this last one that I add, whoops, not there. I'm going to add one more of these divs. And this one is not going to be required, so I'm going to remove that. And this is going to be the phone number. Like that. And we can make it type T-E-L, which is type phone. All right, phone and phone. Now, using tell, and we talked a little bit about this in an earlier class, but using tell, all right, if we were using this on a mobile device that had the ability to, to call out that hopefully then is going to allow us to do that. All right, now we're almost done. But I'm going to put in here, and again, I can space this out if I do want to. I can put a little bit of white space in here, which just makes it a little bit easier to read. All right, so. All right, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add one more div. And in here, I'm first going to have a paragraph and I'm going to use the emphasis tag. Remember, you used to be, do italics like that. And even though you can still do that, that is not what's recommended. What's recommended today is that you use M tags. And the difference between them is basically on browsers, all right, for people who have some kind of a physical disability typically like a browser for the blind. They they tend to read things differently with an EM tag than they do with an I tag. All right, so all I want to say in here is basically that asterisk means that it's required. All right, in fact, I'm even going to put that into a pair. Well, it's in a paragraph. All right, so I've got my div and I've got a paragraph in there. All right, and I'm going to put one more thing in here.
All right, just like that. Now, what is this? This is going to end up being a button. And what type? It's going to end up being a submit button. All right, in fact, if I save this, and if we again look at it in here, there it is down here, it says subscribe now. Now it's not gonna do anything right now. We're not programming it to do anything. You're gonna learn how to do that too. All right, like I said, right now, you may or may not agree, but more or less, kind of looks like a jumbled mess right now. All right, so we will add some CSS to it after we get done with the break. All right, and hopefully make it look a little bit nicer. Then after we add the CSS to it, we'll come down and at the bottom, we'll add a few media queries as well. All right, and it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be things that's a little off kilter, etc. And what you can do if you want, you don't have to. This is not an assignment, but if you want to, one of the things you could do is you could come in here, like I said, if you want to, you could come in here and um, you could try to clean up what I'm giving you right now. All right, so this is what we have right now. And outside of Maine, okay, what's gonna happen? What's going to happen is I'm gonna be doing some floating in a bit. And I wanna turn off floating because I'm about to put in my footer, all right? And the easiest way to do this is to put in a div and I give it an ID. I always just call it clear. You can call it whatever you want. And that's it. That in, in my CSS, that is going to turn off all floating. We'll put that in later. Right now, it means nothing. It's an empty div. That's it. That's all it is. All right. So what else do I want to put in there? Well, next I want to put in my actual footer. And again, if I want to in here, I can give it an ID. I may have mentioned this to you earlier. I may not have. Again, I don't remember all this stuff. Sorry, but it is totally legitimate. I'm going to go back and show you something I showed you a while ago. When you are using these HTML5 tags, that's not the one I wanted to show you. That's what I want to show you. When you're using these tags, just so you know, for example, if this is a section, I can have a header in there. I can have its own nav bar in there. I can have a footer in there. I can do the same thing in here or here. I can even, although I've never seen it, I could put a header in my footer or a footer in my header. All right. This is totally up to you as far as the way you do this. And the reason that I'm bringing that up to you is that's why I tend to, when I, when I think about it at least, give all these things either an ID or a class. And you'll notice that so far virtually everything, if not everything I put in other than this, in fact, this I might use in more than one place. So I am gonna make that a class. But almost everything I put in has been IDs because that's the only one that's on a page. There are developers I know who never use IDs. They make classes for everything, even if they know they're only going to use it once. That way, if they ever decide to use it again on a page, they don't have to worry about changing it from an ID to a class. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. Again, that's just the way some people feel, all right? Okay, now, we're going to add a little something to this that we haven't added before. The first thing is what we have been doing, and that is I'm going to come in here and say copyright. Ampersand copy 2023. And you could put your name here. I'll just put mine here so something is there. All right. And that's inside of the paragraph, but I'm going to add something else. All right, this is going to be the first time. It's only going to be about six or seven lines, but I'm going to put some JavaScript in here. And the reason I'm going to do it is I want you to be able to see 
when we have breaks at different spots, you know, when 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 it starts to look different on screen, on different screen sizes, we're going to put a button down there and you can click the button and it'll tell you then the current height of the screen and the current width of the screen. So if you want to check it out, you'll be able to do that. Do we have to do this? Of course not. All right, but I am going to come in here and I'm going to say input. Now I'm going to say type equal button. All right. And I'm going to say value equal current screen size. And I'm going to say on click equals display current screen size. Now by itself, by itself, that didn't do very much. All right, just so you know. Now what I am going to do so you can see it. All right, what I am going to do in here is I am going to save and run this because I want you to see. All right. And let me close. I've got a bunch of stuff open here, so let me close a few things. All right, so there's my subscribe now. Notice I've now got a button that says current screen size. It's not doing anything either, but it's there and it's actually below my footer. That's OK. All right, now for the first time in here, what you're going to see is I'm going to add some JavaScript into my program. Now, not to confuse you, but just so you know, when I add this JavaScript in a way, in fact, really, it's a lot like adding CSS. What I mean is I can add it in a separate file. I can add it at the top. Up here. And I can add it literally right in here where I'm going to use it. It's a little bit different. I mean, I'm not literally putting it into the HTML. All right. But there's different ways that I can do it, and that's all I'm trying to tell you. All right, I'm going to just put it in here because I want you to be able to see everything that we're doing in here. Now, when you put in JavaScript, you must have a certain opening tag and a certain closing tag, and it is script. All right, you must put your JavaScript within script tags. Now, if I'm if I would put this into its own file, so let's say that I made a JS folder in here. I don't have one, but for a minute, please pretend we made one and we, we called our file script.js. Then I'd want to come in and say source equals js slash script dot j dot js. I'd want to do something like that. That would be if I was putting it in here, so if I came in here and I created a JS folder, all right, which would be totally fine to do, all right? So we could do that if we wanted to, all right? Maybe we'll go back later and just prove that indeed we can do that, I don't know. All right, so I don't have this, so I'm just gonna do it in here. Now, sometimes, you also see one more tag in here. I'm going to show you the tag. It is not mandatory. You can come in here and put in um, type equals. Type equals text slash JavaScript. This is old school. All right. This is called, this is what's known as basically the MIME type, M I M E. No, not a MIME like you see, you, you know was trying to you know do whatever, get out of a box or whatever. But this is like multimedia internet something extension. This is old school. If you don't put this in, it literally defaults to type equal text slash JavaScript. The reason I'm bringing that up to you is you occasionally still see it, that people put it in. Also, even though I've never shown it to you, you can come in here, And in these, like for the ones that from for mine in here, let's say I could have come in here and said type equal text slash CSS. Sometimes you see that as well there. It's usually today. It's very 
few and far between where you see stuff like that, but it's not impossible that you could. All right, what I wanna have happen is when I click this button, I want this routine to run that's called display current screen size. Well, right now we don't have a routine called display current screen size, so I'm gonna make one. All right, it's called a function and it looks like this. Okay, and right now, if I did it, nothing would happen. But just to show you, this, is, this isn't what we're gonna type in here, but I'm gonna put an alert in here and I'm gonna say, hello from JavaScript. That's all I'm gonna put in there. Okay, I'm gonna remove that in just a minute, but I want you to see it, all right? So again, I'm gonna do a file, save all. I'm gonna come back to my program and I'm going to click the current screen size. And you see, I get hello from JavaScript. All right, that's an alert. It's not used that often. It used to be used a lot, but it's more a hindrance than anything else. What I want is I want an alert like that, but I don't want it to say hello from JavaScript. I want it to tell me the height of my current window and the width of my current window. That's what I want it to say. So I'll keep that alert line there, but above it, I'm gonna create what are called two different variables. All right, and I'm gonna say, don't worry about what this means. This is all stuff we'll go over later. Right? So I'm gonna change this so it actually means something. And I'm gonna say in here with, And there's different ways of doing what I'm going to show you. You're going to see all this as we go on. I'm going to put it, I don't want it to run off the screen. No, it's not going to anyway, but. And in between these two, let's put a blank line. So it'll, have, it'll show me the width and the height. Now let's see if it works. If this works now, after I save it, and I click the button now, it should say something like width, I don't know, whatever our width is, let's say 700, height 900, something like that, if it works. So let's see. All right, now it says width undefined, height undefined. Okay, and I bet you, yep, because I use the old way. This should say inner width and it should say inner height. All right. And when you put two words together like that, typically the second one, this is called camel casing. This, this is all stuff we're going to go over. Sorry about that. So let's see if that fixed it. All right, I'm gonna refresh and I'm gonna click current screen size. And it says the width of my screen right now is 768 and the height of my screen right now is 372. Now you might say, well, I, I don't get that. What if I made it smaller? All right, what if I came back and did something like this? All right, I know it looks like a mess, but still. Now you'll notice those numbers have changed. All right, so I have been able and do a little bit of programmatic manipulation, for lack of better words, all right? So this is everything that I wanted to show you for the HTML, and you're probably thinking, well, I'm not very impressed. I wouldn't be either, all right? But I am gonna one more time do a file save, and it is 9.04, we're gonna come back at 9.15, and when we do, I'm gonna come in and start to write the CSS for this. So I'm going to get myself a new drink and I will see you in 11 minutes.
All right, it is 9.15, so I'm going to start up. And again, we're going to start writing the CSS. We'll do this nice and slowly and deliberately. And when I make some changes, we'll immediately, we'll go in and look and see if they have been put onto the actual page. All right, so first I'm going to put in some global settings. And oh, that means it'll be for the body. All right. And I'll give it a background. And you'll notice it's kind of a grayish background. All right. I'll set my font size to one, whoops, to one rim. If you don't know this too, typically if I do this, that's the way it should be. But if you do this, you usually get an error. Sometimes it'll show it as an error. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll actually work like that and it might just stop working but you know you shouldn't put a blank space in there is what i'm saying well i'm hoping that works with the railway that we put in there but we'll find out in just a bit and i'll just put in here like sans serif how about that and the other thing and i just looked that up is i'm putting in here you're going to end up putting this in most of the time at the top in your body. You're going to put in box sizing. Order box. OK, and let's take a look. I brought up the W3 schools page for it. And I'll try to put it into my own English. All right, what this says, it's kind of what they say right there. But what it is, is it means that when you are figuring out the size of an element, you want to include any padding and any border you might add. All right. And the reason that that's important is if you remember when we came in and we were talking about those formulas and things yesterday. All right. That it, it's much easier when you say, hey, just put everything together kind of and bundle it together rather than adding it up in pieces. Now, I don't know what this try it yourself does, but if you look right here, okay, it says width and height only apply to the content of the element and here they don't, all right? So this div, as it says, is 300 pixels, but the div itself is what's in here, not the stuff around it, all right? Because it also has, in this case, all right, it also has, as you can see, a height of 100 pixels, all right, and it's got a width of 300 pixels, okay? Now, in the second example, we're doing the same thing, but we say box sizing border box, and you can see how it changes, all right? So now what you're saying with the 300 and the 100, that's everything, including 
including any border that you put in here and including any padding. All right, so you can see the big difference in the size. Now, it's not that you have to do it like this, but again, normally setting it in like setting it up like that with border box is just going to make it a little bit easier to work with. All right, so let me go back. Now, I've got a feeling that this didn't work because I, I would have thought it would have changed color, but we'll see in just a minute. I'm going to save and then take a look at it. Oops. We can get rid of these things now. All right, and I th man, maybe it did change it. All right, now it doesn't look very different other than we've got a different font size and we've got a gray background. All right, but that's basically that's all we put into it right now. So like I said, I'm trying to be very deliberate here and do one or two things and then go in and show you what we've done. Now, if you remember, we had this ID that was called container. I believe it was an ID and not a class. All right, and I'm going to give it a width. We'll kind of do it the way we did yesterday. 85%, I'm going to give it a background color. And it's going to be, what I did was I went online and I looked up the colors for the St. Louis Blues. Now, I'm going to put this in like this, FCB 514. Okay, and you can see that's the gold. All right, we're the blue and gold for the, for the uh, Blues colors. Now, that said, just so you know, all right, this can be uppercase or lowercase. It really and truly doesn't matter. All right, my text color is going to be the blue. All right, and again, how did I find out those colors? I literally Googled them. That's all I did. All right, so. Now, hopefully, you know, this is a little bit of review, but hopefully this makes sense to you. Margin one rem auto, what does that mean? That means I want a margin of one rem on the top and the bottom, and I want the left and the right margins basically to be centered. All right. Now, I also want this to be, it's going to be in a container, and I want the container to actually be a little bit, a little bit, uh, circular, or elliptical, whatever you want to call it. And to do that, we use something called a border radius. Now, if I were to do this and said 50%, I could do that and it would be a circle. That's not what I want. All right, so I'm just going to put in here 0 0.625 rem. All right, and then I'm going to put in one more thing here and then we'll take a look at it. Overflow auto. Now, you may have uh, in the past, you may have heard of the old saying about trying to shove 10 pounds worth into a five pound bag. Well, what overflow auto means, okay, you can have overflow auto, you can have overflow hidden. It means that if I've got an area where I'm trying to put information and I say that that area is a certain size and I go beyond that size, if I say overflow hidden, it means take everything or I take everything that that is overflowing and hide it. With auto, it's going to try to show it. All right, it really wouldn't matter in here because we're not going to really do anything with it anyway. All right. The other thing that I'm going to do is, if you remember, when we came in here, when when at the top, we said our width and height were 80 and 64. Well, I'm going to get rid of those. All right. That 80 and that 64. That's 80 pixels, and that's 64 pixels. Why should you care? I'm going to show you in just a second. I'm going to go back into here, and I'm going to say, hey, for my logo, which I gave a uh, an ID to, I'm going to say with, now I could say 80 pixels, and I could say height, 64 pixels, and it would be just fine. There's really nothing wrong with doing that. But if you remember, we said that if we if we can, we'd like to use rims, all right? And there's six, there are, you know, one 
rem equals 16 pixels. So if I take 80 and divide it by 16, I get a nice round number of five. If I take 64 and divide it by 16, I get a nice white round number of four. So that's what we've done in here so far. Not a whole lot. All right, let's do one last thing and then we're going to run it. So let's go into our paragraphs. All right, and let's give them a little bit of margin. All right, and what I'd set up was 10 pixels and zero, and I also set up a line height of 1.5 rem. Now that said, remember that's 10 pixels. So let's go in here and let's take 10 and divide it by 16. And you get 0 0.625. So I'll change that to 0 0.625 rem. Now, hopefully, we haven't made a lot of changes, but hopefully you're going to at least start to see it looking a little bit different. So let's look. So file, save all, and then go back. All right. Well, it's already starting to take a little bit of form to it. Again, it doesn't look great at all. I'm not trying to say it does, but it, to me at least, it looks a heck of a lot better than it ju did just a few minutes ago. And if you look up here, a little hard to see, but if you look here, there's that roundness that I showed you. That's the border radius. You can see the background color. You can see the, the text color or the foreground color. And, you know, in here, we've literally done nothing in here with this stuff. All right. So we still have a ways to go. All right. OK, so with with where we are, then. This is still stuff that we want to basically when I say global, we only have one page, but even if we had multiple pages, we want the body stuff to be the same, the container stuff, the logo stuff, the paragraph stuff, etc. All right, but now. All right, this is going to be individual because so I'm going to put a comment in here that just says individual page settings. All right. And again, I was when I learned this stuff like you, I was taught you really can't have too many comments in here as far as trying to help people. Now, not everybody would agree and there. I mean, I literally had a student when I said that years ago. This is not a joke. All right, they were commenting every line. They would put on a blank line. They would write a comment in there that said this is a blank line. No, no kidding. That's what they actually did. No, that you don't want to do. And you know, literally you're going to learn like if I've got the name of a variable and it's H and let's say it's your birthday. So your age should be incremented by one. So you say something like H equals H plus one. There really is no need for you to put a comment there that says increment age by one. All right, people can read that and understand it. All right, so let's come in here and let's do our header. And we'll put in our main header. All right, you know what that is. That's that main header. So font family. And I don't remember what the other one was called. I'm sorry. So let me look back in. What oh, was in here? So we had railway and the other one was Roboto Mono. So I'm going to try to see if we can use that. All right. So the font family in here, when there's a blank space in there like that, you must put in a, you must put it in single or double quotes. So I'll put Roboto Mono. And again, if it's not, I'll put in a sans serif. All right. Let's give this a background color. This will be that blue. Notice how it is even remembering from what we did earlier. All right. So I'm just reversing the color from what we had before. OK, so that's what I've set up for our main header. Let's see what that looks like. All right, 
again, by, by no means am I saying it's perfect. You could come in here and say, well, you should have had some top margin there or you should have done. That's fine. If you want to do that, go ahead and do it. You're going to have this code at the end of the period. So do whatever you want to do to it. This is a great way for you to come in and just practice this stuff. All right. Now, next week, again, when we go over chapter nine and we talk about Flexbox, you're going to learn something you can use, you know, that, that's got a bunch of settings and a bunch of different stuff you can use. But the idea will remain the same in that when we change the screen size, hopefully at least, it will remain a, with a consistent look and feel. Now, we put nothing in here right now. We've done nothing. But it's still it's got it's got a little bit of baked in stuff. OK, it doesn't look great, but, you know, it, it could look a heck of a lot worse, too. All right. When you get to a certain point, it may start looking bad. It may not. It's not really too bad right now. All right. But again, we're, we're not worried about that yet. We're working our way down. All right. So this was our main header. Right there. And I'm copying that because for the main header for that H1, all right, I'm going to set that, I'm going to make that bigger. So I'm going to say font size, three rem. Now, I'm not going to save this yet, but you'll notice there's the size right there, the St. Louis Blues News. All right, you can see it. All right, so now when I come back in here and I do do a file, save all, and I look at it again, now you can see a big difference. Now, if that's too big, okay, it's too big. Then start cutting it down. So let's try 2.5 and see what that looks like. That's all on one line. Maybe that's better, maybe that's worse. Three worked really well because I used a different font type before. If that's still too big, again, make it smaller. Totally up to you. All right. Now let's see. These are almost budding into one another. I think you'd agree with that right now. All right. So really right here, we could probably use a little margin here and maybe even a little margin there. All right. And again, this is all stuff. I'm just eyeballing it right now. So I'm going to again use my header main header. But now instead of working with the uh, H1, I'm going to work with the image. All right. And I'm going to say with that image, I'm going to give it a margin and I want the margin, <clears throat> excuse me, set for the top and the bottom. So let's say 0.75 rem zero. See what that looks like. Remember that says 0.75, which is 12 pixels. I'm sorry, seven, five, yeah, 12 pixels on the top and on the bottom and zero pixels on the left and the right. If I don't like it, I'll just go back in and change it. Now you can see there's more room here and there's more room there. All right. So really, especially as you are learning how to do this stuff, especially as you're learning how to do it. All right. Um, what what you what you're really going to find is a lot of it is just playing around. All right. And yes, there are. I mean, I, I've shown you some of this and I wanted to show you something. I meant to show you this the other day. All right. And I'm going to show this to you. You might care. You might not care. And I know a lot of you when I talk to you individually, it's like, you know, you show us this stuff and I love to do it, but I don't have the time. I understand that. All right. I really and truly do. But for those of you who maybe want a little bit more, all right, there's a guy out there. His name is Wes Bose, W-E-S-B-O-S. -S, and I'm going to try WesBose.com. There it is. Now, he's got all sorts of classes out here. Some of them you have to pay for. Many of them you don't. The reason I'm showing you this, there's a beginning JavaScript, but it looks it doesn't say free, so I think you have to pay for that one. But unless he's changed this, he's got there, it says free. He's got one on grid, and we're not going to talk about grid, but he's got another one on Flexbox, which we'll do next week. So if you wanted to look a little bit ahead of time, I think there's 20 lessons, and each lesson is about three or three to five minutes long. 
All right. Could you do it in an hour? That's up to you. But he's got a bunch of courses in here and all you do is sign up. I've never got an email from him. All right. I just signed up for the courses and I thought the one that 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 was in here on on um, what the you know what the Flexbox was pretty good. All right. It's under Flexbox.io. Again. I don't know which email address I used during the course. Please check this box if you want to proceed. Yeah. OK, so like I said, there's about 15, 20 lessons, whatever. If you don't care, well, then I just wasted a few minutes of your life. Sorry. All right. So what what else do we have in here? So if we go back and we look in here, we started and basically what we just worked on was everything that was in here. So we actually typed in more CSS than we probably had HTML. All right. Now, next we've got main text and we've got an H2 in there. So I'm going to do a little bit of work with that newsletter coming soon. I'm going to do that one next. Hopefully we've gotten to the point now where there's really nothing that's in here that you see that's of a surprise to you. Or you I don't know what the heck that means. But again, I have not saved yet. I was going to, but get rid of that. This newsletter coming soon is what we want to change. All right. Right now it looks like the rest of the text. All right. So hopefully after we save, it's going to look a lot different. And you can see that it does. It's centered. All right. It's bolded. It's taking up 100% of this. All right. It literally is, but it's centered, so it's kind of hard to tell. And it's got some margin top on it. We could add anything else we wanted. We could pad, we could do anything. Speaking of which, if you look right here, this is our regular text. And boy, that stuff is really plumb stuck to pretty much the end. And the reason it's stuck to the end like that, if you remember, all right, if you remember is when we first put in that reset file, we said margin and padding were set to zero. All right, so let's go in there and change that next. So again, this is all in our main text. Remember, it's right here. OK, but really we want the whole main section, so I'm just going to use main. I'm just going to use the tag name and I'm going to say hey, for main. I want there to be padding in here. And I'm just going to put 1.25 rem since I only put one number in there. All right, you should remember this since I've only put one number in there that says give me 1.25 rem which again is 20 pixels of padding, top, right, bottom, and left. All right, so this should, for lack of better words, kind of look, make this look a little more spaced out. And you can see, now I've got that all the way around there. Nothing is touching right now, uh, except this. That's my footer, but footer isn't inside of main. And same with that button, that's in the footer as well. So we'll worry about that in a little bit. But again, it's coming together. I'm not saying it looks great or anything like that. I'm saying it's coming together. All right. Now, if you remember as far as what's in here next. Remember, OK, we have a left side and that had those. 
four paragraphs, I think it was. Then we had the right side, and that had the form in it. All right, so that's what we're going to do in here next. We were going to do some work on the left side, then we'll do some work on the right side. Oops. All right. Let's see what that did. All right. Now you might say it didn't. It did a lot. This is our whole left side now. We haven't done anything with the right side, remember. But our whole left side now is done. All right. Now, not totally done, but you're going to see it in just a minute. Now. If I decide later that while wow, this text is really big, I could always make it smaller. Again, these are all things that we can do as we're working on it. This is what makes a good web designer. All right, the designer kind of takes a look at everything and then the developer makes it happen. All right, so let's add some more stuff in here. So that's the whole thing itself. So that was the div basically. Now, let's start putting in some stuff. How about the paragraph? Well, this I'm going to do a text align left. You very, very rarely will see paragraph text on a web page that's centered. It just, for some reason, typically, it looks, for lack of better words, kind of looks off when you do that. Also, when you do that, all right, so this is left justified. You'll very rarely see that, see it where it's set up. It may look like it here, but that's just because I put the same text in here multiple times. There is a, a fully justified too. You typically don't do that, all right, because you en it ends up that rather, you know, you have a lot of spaces between some words, and it just, again, looks kind of funky, for lack of better words. All right, so it's coming together. It's not perfect and it won't be perfect. All right. All right, so that's really all I wanted to do for the left side. So now I'm going to do a few things to the right side. Now, the big thing is we floated the left side to the left, and now we're floating the right side to the right. And we, we that side, not size. And again, the best thing to do then is to just keep taking a look at it. Now you can see, again, this is still the stuff in our footer. We'll worry about moving that down later. But again, hopefully you're seeing, oh yeah, it's looking a little bit different now. All right. So let's continue on. This is that legend. This is the thing that said sign up for our newsletter now or something like that. And again, this is just me. I like doing a thing or two and then taking a look at it, not because I'm sitting there and admiring my work. All right, but I'm looking at it here. Wow, maybe I should make that font size a little smaller, for example. All right, maybe that's too close. So maybe I need a margin top on there as well. OK, just those kind of things. So if I want to, then I've got a margin bottom. All right, I could just come in here and say margin. and one rem and zero. 
and that's going to put a top and a bottom margin on it. And if I think that size font size is too big, I could say font size. I think right now it's at about a rem. I could say 0.75 rem. But again, this is all stuff that I'm eyeballing here and I can change it around if I think that's necessary. Now, maybe that's too small, but you can see now they're lining. They're more lining up. So again, I can play with that until I get it to be pretty much the size that I want it to be. All right, I'm just going to leave it for now. At least I'm going to leave it like that. But again, if you decide you want to change it, you know, you're going to have the code in just a bit. So there's the legend. So let's work on this form now and try to make that look a little bit better. And hopefully you remember that was called contact form. Give it a line height. All right, you might say, well, what did that do? Again, the easiest way is just to show you. All right, so you can see I put some space in there. They're not lined up yet. We'll worry about that in a bit. All right, but again, hopefully it's looking a little better. Now that I look at this, now they're not lined up. So maybe I don't want as much top margin as, as I had in there before. All right, with this margin, maybe I do want the margin bottom. Oops. To be one rem. All right, and maybe I want the margin top. As an example. To be just 0.5 rem and again, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at let's say 0.6 rem. All right, and maybe that's not where I want it, but I can always go back in later and change it. OK, they pretty much line up now. I might want to even make it bigger than that. But again, hopefully you're getting the idea as far as what I'm talking about. All right. Now I took this whole form that was here and I put it inside of. All right. It's in a uh, we the form itself is in an ID we called form box. You may remember that you may not from what we did later or earlier rather. So let's come in here. And we will give it a border. Most of my borders, I, I tend to do it and I'm making them black like this, but you can make your border any color. All right. Just a pretty substan substantial change right there. All right, now if I wanted to also, what we could do is maybe instead of black, all right, I mean, you're looking at it right now, instead of black, we could make that that blue, maybe that would be better. We could put some margin top on there, et cetera, all right? I didn't do that originally, but I'm again, I'm just eyeballing it right now. So that other color was. Uh, that right there, whoops. Hopefully I did it right, we'll find out in a minute. And again, remember you can say background or you can say background color, either one will work. All right, and we'll try to put a little margin in here. All right. Now, one thing to remember with what we're doing right now, and that is what I'm doing is I am doing desktop first. So in other words, we're not doing anything to make this look good when it gets on a smaller screen. All right. So that's something that we might want to be aware of at a later time is what I'm telling you. All right. So let's go back into here. And.
put a field set in here, and I don't know if I've got a field set in here or not. No, I don't. So I put something in here because I, I played with this thing and I moved and removed a bunch of stuff. So I don't need that, that uh, field set in there because I don't have a field set anymore. And if you say, what's the field set? We're going to go over that in a week, week or so. All right. Again, as always, the easiest thing to do here is to save it and show it to you. All right. Now, just so you know, it's because I've got this thing is so big in here right now. I, what I said with inline block is I wanted these to appear on the same line, but there's not enough room here with 45% to actually do that. All right. I'd have to go and make some other changes. All right. But if we were looking at it on a really big screen, bigger than what we have, this would be on the same line. All right, I could go back in and I could make all these things smaller because I don't want to do that. All right, so if I, you know, probably the ease, one of the easiest ways, well, would be to sit there and make my font size here. The whole for the whole thing would be to make it smaller. All right, I think if I do this as an example, if I go up to here, all right, I've got font size one rem. I'm going to make it 0.75 rem just to show you what the difference should be once I do that. All right, and you can see that's a lot smaller. This is too. I don't really want to make it much smaller than that, but if I were to make it 0.5 rem, which is pretty small. All right, well. That's too small, but you hopefully you're getting the idea here. I'm still not sure why that's not showing on the same line. I guess it still doesn't have enough room. So let me go back up and I'm going to make that 0.75 rem. I think that looked OK. And then in here where I was making this, yeah, I want it to be 45 percent, but I've got the width of my labels as 75 pixels. All right. And well, 80 pixels would be. 5 rem. So I'm going to try changing that to 5 rem, see if that helps. Now they're on the same line. All right. Again, there's still work that could be done here. I've made the size of each one of these things the same, even though it doesn't look like it. They're all the same. All right. And I've right justified each one. Now, what that might mean is when you look, these are kind of stuck right here. OK, so one thing we could do is we could put either, you know, a margin right on this or a margin left on this. So again, there's a lot of stuff here that we can do. All right, these are our labels. We've got the margin bottom and I'm going to try to try to put a little margin here. So I'm going to say margin left. And I will use. Uh, how about 0 0.25, 0 0.25 rim? In fact, we've got a bot. Well, that's fine. Rim. All right. I don't know if that's going to change it much, but we'll see. All right. There's a little bit of space in there now. I could put more in. Again, ideally, at least you get the idea. All right. All right. We also had in here this paragraph and this button, and those have not been styled at all. So let's look at styling those. Okay.
It didn't do anything I th unless I gave it the wrong name. Let's look. That isn't moving, and I'm not sure right now why it's not, but it's not. So I'll have to take a look at that. All right. Let's figure out why that wouldn't move. No, oh, there we centered it. It's not the way I wanted to do it, but that worked. And finally, the last thing that we want to change in here were two things. All right. We want to we want to move the button over as well. We want to style the button a little bit. OK, and then when we get done, we also want to set it to a couple things right now. If I put my mouse over it, nothing special happens. You get a little bit of a shadow look, but we want when we hover over it, we want to change the color a little bit and we want to change the cursor on the button and make it a pointer so it looks like a little finger. So we'll do that next. Maybe equals, I don't know why that's there, but it is. Okay. So it's contact form, type equals submit. And again, I'm just going to start adding some stuff. 12 pixels, which is 0 0.75 rem. 17 pixels, let's just put in one rem. So that'll be 0.75 rem top bottom and one rem left and right. Change the color. And the background color. So it kind of maps up with everything else. Now, you may or may not be able to tell, but buttons actually have a border on them. I don't want there to be any. Now, I could say zero rem or zero picks or whatever, but zero is zero, so I can just say zero as well. All right, and I'm going to put a little border radius on here. All right, just, uh, I don't know, this might not be enough, but let's see. Let's see. 0 0.375 rem. Okay, we'll see how that looks in just a minute. And this is where I may have to play with this a little bit. The margin left uh, and the margin bottom. And try it. Well, it, it wants auto. Maybe we can try that and see if it works. All right, so there's a lot of stuff we just set right there for that button. And you can, well, it's pushed over too far, but you can see how different it looks. All right, it looks, it's got the same coloring now as what we have, plus it's got a little roundish look. All right, so I want to look over here. And we had margin left auto that we didn't want that. So let's try, let's just try over here, 0 0.25 rem. See if that makes it look better. Well, that's not enough, as you can see. I 
that didn't move it at all, which is weird. Some heck of it. Let's try it like this. Oh, it's moving, not much. So I'd have to sit there and play with it for a while. I mean, I can just go throw numbers in there to see what happens. You can see it's almost there now. So it looks like if I give it about a 4.5, maybe that'll be where we want it. All right, that's not bad. It's not perfect, but you know, hopefully again, you're getting the idea. All right, the other thing is I want it set so when we hover over it, I want it to be a little bit of a different color and I want that uh, pointer to be there, okay? So let's see. Um, it's everything we did here, but then we wanna put over it colon hover over almost anything and change things that you want to change. So background, we'll make it pound 0, 0, 2 F A A, which is a little bit different blue. And that should say background. And we'll say cursor pointer, which as I mentioned before, we'll make it look like it has that little uh, Finger on it. You know, you, it's kind of subtle, but when I put it over there, it becomes a little bit lighter. Plus, the, the notice how the pointer changes. It's now a finger. All right. Now, I'm looking in here, and somehow we're almost done. All right, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back and put in the media queries. But there's only about two or three things we want. I want to say here, and one of them is, and I don't know how I missed this, but I did. All right, on the right hand side here. All right, I don't know if we put in the quote that we wanted to use or not, so let me look. So this is the right hand side uh, in here. All right, and after the form. Right there. OK, so I was still inside of my div right here. All right, I wanted to put a block quote in here and I didn't. I apologize. And I like this. I saw this online. It says. When whoops. When hell freezes over. I'll play hockey there too. All right. And then I did put in a line break. That's that's really bad practice, but I did it anyway. And then I put in author unknown. OK. All right, why did I do that? I want to show you right now. Now it's not going to look like much here right now. There it is. And I should I, I want to take it out of out of the box here. All right, I don't think I had it in the box originally, so let me get it out of there. And to get it out of there, I'll remove it from that div that's right here. Put it. There we go. So when hell freezes over, I'll play hockey there too. Okay. Again, we're almost done. We'll take a break, then we'll come back and we'll write a little bit of media queries, and then that'll be it for the day. All right.
All right, so that'll be for the block quote. I told you before about that thing called clear. All right, and actually clear isn't a great word because it may end up being the clear might be a reserved word. So where I cleared that before, I remember even where that was, but we'll find it. There, I'm going to change it from clear to clear fix. All right, right there. And that isn't styled at all. So all I want to do is to say when you've got a class called clear fix, that all you want to do is to clear both. So if I've got any float left, it'll clear. If I've got any float right, it'll clear. And the last thing I want to do before we take our break is the footer quickly. All right. And I think we gave, did we give the footer an ID? We did. We called it main footer. And let's take a look. All right, that's probably too big, but that's OK. I'll make it smaller in a minute. But you can see it doesn't look terrible right now. It sure as hell isn't, pardon my French, isn't perfect, but that's way too big. So I'm going to make that smaller. OK, that's still pretty big. All right, it's not terrible and I should really put put a little bit of uh, margin top on there too. Like that. Still may be a little bit big, but. OK, so that's what we've got again by by no means am I saying that this is perfect. It's not, but I think it looks a heck of a lot better than it did when we started this. OK, it is 1006. Let's let's just take nine minutes. We'll come back at 1015 and I'm going to write a few media queries. Not really that much. I mean, we'll write a, a little bit of stuff be 30 or 40 lines, but I want to write one, then run it so you can see, then write another one and run it so you can see. So I'll see you. We'll make it 10 minutes. At 10.17, we'll start back up. 10.17 on the clock right here.
All right, it is 1017. Just so you know, during the break, I changed the color of the uh, border here because it was black. I changed that to the same blue. All right, and I also put in a little bit of uh, margin top before the quote here. She made the quote a little smaller and centered it. I just like the way that that looked better. All right. So again, like I said, you'll get all this stuff. The other thing I did during the break was I did create a repo. I haven't pushed anything out to it yet, but that repo, it's going to be called landing page and it'll be out there by the end of class today. So we're down to the bottom. So let's write some media queries. All right. So I'm going to start with uh, I'm going to see how this looks and I, I don't know because like I said, I'm using a different font size, so we'll see if it works or not. So when we get to this point, when we get to 768 pixels, which is basically the size of the changes in here, just it looks terrible. I'll just, you know, remove the changes. So. All right. A couple more things I played around with in here. Like I said, I'm not sure if they'll look good or not, but let's look at what we've got so far. We're saying that when we reach 768 pixels, that we basically don't want a left side or a right side anymore. We want what's on the left to take up 100%. We want what's on the right to take up 100%, which will necessitate us removing all of our floats. In addition, we want our H1 tags, our H2 tags, our legend, and our paragraphs to all be centered. Now, I don't know about the paragraph, but we'll see in just a second. Now, it doesn't look any different now. It's when it hits that point. All right, I guess it already does, so you can see it. So what do we have here now? There's our left that's on top. There's our right that's down below it. All right. So you can see how it has changed. And if I click the current screen size, it says 768. All right. So like I said, there's a lot of different things. If, if I wanted this to take place when it was a smaller size, then instead of saying, max width width of rather of 768 for example i could have put 600 in here all right and now it looks the way that it had looked but you'll notice that as soon as we come in here and we reach a certain point that there you can see it right there so it's right about there and again if i go down to the bottom and I check my current screen size with 599. And we told it with a width of 600. All right. So again, I'm, I'm just, I'm playing around here now, just so you know. 
So I'm going to go back and change. I'm going to change everything to what I had before. All right, so this may look different. Feel free to do whatever you want to do with it if you play with it or anything else. But what I had in here originally on mine was I decided that button that was on the form, I was going to try to do the margin on that only when it was a certain width. So what I had here was max width 768. And let me get rid of. I'm going to rewrite that in just a second. So I had here margin. I'm sorry. Contact form. Input type equals submit. And then here just margin. Left. 0 0.75 rem. That's how I had the first one. And like I said, I'm using a totally different font, so it doesn't look anything like the one I created originally, but that's okay. All right. I think we just said here 600 pixels. Mine was originally 700, but I'm just gonna change it to 600 right here. Left side, right side, yeah, that's good. Good. Okay, so you can see all the stuff that I've changed right there. All right, so I'm going to also, with right here, I'm going to do some stuff to the, uh, to the labels <clears throat> in my contact form, okay? All right, so we changed some stuff on the label again when we get down to 600. So let's see what that looks like. Here's the label. Well, that looks pretty terrible, to be honest with you. All right, but you can see how it's sort of getting fixed in here. All right. So what do I want to do in here? Well, probably that's way too small a font. OK, and this I looks like I would want to either try to do a text align center if that works or give it some margin. Less some some left margin where I push it over. So let's look at those. So the font size, let's make it 75 rim. All right, and let's try some margin left in here. I'm just going to say three rem. I have absolutely no idea what it should be. All right. Well, that got bigger. This didn't change, so it didn't like my margin left that I put in here, so I'd have to play with that a little bit too. All right. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. All right. And I'm going to put a few other things in here. So that was the label. All right, and I'm going to do some stuff to the other stuff that is in here. All right, what do I mean? I'm going to show you right now.
uh, I could play with the size on this if I wanted to. I, all I did here was just screw along with the margin a little bit. Now, this is for my button, but you may or may not remember, I also had in here, I had a type of text. So this, these are my text boxes. So that's first name and last name. I had a type of email. That was for the email in the form and then a type of tell. That was for the telephone link. So I can play with those as well. All right, and let's see what else I can also say. You know, I'm, I'm making everything a little smaller, working on it a little bit. So remember that I had that paragraph underneath too. All So we could give that a margin left as well. In fact, I'm going to give it the same margin left. So really where I have these in here, I need a comma there and a comma there. And let's put another comma here, hit enter, and we'll put this in there as well. Like that. And finally for our footer, Let's also come in and change the font size in there. Remember, I think it was set to 0.5. Like that. All right. here and start making this smaller. Well, I moved it over too far, but you hopefully at least you get the idea. I went over like 8.5 and it looks like I should only go over about 6.5, but you can see as we're doing this. All right, you can for one thing, look at the size here. You can see that it, it will eventually there it gets bigger. All right, so there's a lot of stuff we can do as I'm playing with this. I mean, there's there are places. There's a lot of changes that have to be made in here. This looks crummy and it's going to look crummy at certain sizes. All right, and if you want to play with that, great. And if you don't, that's also fine. All right, I'm going to put a couple more things in here and then I'm going to call it a period. All right. And. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change. It's going to be a lot of it's going to be the same, but it's going to be for different sizes. So I'm going to come in here and do this. Let me copy this. And this will be for a max width of 425 pixels. So this would be more of the smartphone type of size. All right. So again, I can come in and, and again, do any and everything that I want to do in here. This is where you really want to start thinking about changing font sizes, possibly not showing your image at all, um, playing with your buttons, et cetera, all the other stuff that we were playing with. So up here where I just set that to 8.5, like I said, I'm going to try 6.5 to see if that makes it a little bit better. All right, those are better. It's like I could make it about seven and I got to push this back over. All right, I think you can see here, you know, you make one change and there's a ripple effect and it affects just about anything and everything else that you're working with. All right, so in here, and I think I'm just going to leave it at this. I'm going to put a couple more in. I did another one too for. 325 where I made it even smaller and that would be again on a flip an old fashioned flip phone. All right, so I came in here and said. Uh, main text. The H1. Let me 
here is where I decided, like I said, to get rid of the image. And these are all things that if you are working on something yourself, all right, you can go in and basically set it up any way you want, of course. All right. And otherwise, you know, you're going to have, if you're working on it for someone, all right, I'm just going to grab all that stuff I took from here and just change the numbers a little bit. So this, I think I set to about 3 rem, and this to like 4.5. So again, what you're going to see now is when I get down to a certain point here, and I really start making it smaller, all right? Just exactly what's happening here. Now, I didn't do anything with this. I should have made the, that size smaller so you can see that. I'm trying to figure out why my image is still showing, but it is. Maybe it's not. I don't know what size does it think it is right here. It says 200, so it should have should have kicked in. But you can see with the rest of it how bad it looks. All right, that looks OK. This button is going to have to be shrunk down. These are going to have to be set where rather than them being, you know, I'm going to have to cut down the size, etc. And I just didn't have time to work on that. Sorry about that. We're going to do another one of these on Monday, and I'm going to try to get everything set for it. So that's basically what I had to show you. All right. So again, what I'm going to do here, oops, go back into here and do a files save. And do the same thing over here. And over here. All right. And then I'm going to come in here. I did come in. Let's see what we'll do. Our git add. Whoops. Add dot. All right. Let's see. We'll get status. See if we've got everything ready. There it is. All right. I'll do a git commit minus M uh, landing page. With today's date on it, so 9-15-2023. All right, and I'll push it. And there it is, so you can do whatever you want to do with it or nothing. If that's what you'd rather. Now again, I want to I want to repeat one last time. All right, just so you have an idea. What we're going to do on Monday when we start is we're going to create one more just responsive site. That's what it'll be. All right. I don't know what it'll be yet. I'll have to work on it this weekend. I'm hoping it looks a lot nicer than the garbage I just put out there for you. Once we finish, I'm going to start lecturing on chapter nine. And it says how to use flexible box layout. It's just typically called Flexbox. All right. And after we go through chapter nine, we are going to do the uh, the Halloween store for chapter nine. All right. And after we get done with that, all right, we're going to do an exercise where we're going to create a responsive, probably just a single page layout like we did today but we'll do it using Flexbox, all right? By next Thursday at the latest, by next Thursday, um, I will hand out hot number three. Now next, not the... You've got all of this. You have no homework this weekend, all right? But what I am going to do is if there is anyone, when I look, probably Monday morning, but if there is anyone who does not have anything in their repo, they don't have a repo or their repos are empty, you're going to be marked absent for this week.
because you were given two class periods to work on this. I can't think of any other way to do this than the way I've done it. I'm trying to be as fair as possible. I uh, yesterday I went into into the campus and I was in Wentzville and I was talking with one of the um, hardware instructors and he asked me how how does that go? How does that work when you've got an online class? And I told him some of the problems with people understanding different things and not being able to see people's faces, et cetera. And I said, and we've had a problem with late work. And he looked at me and he said, late work? And I said, yeah. He said, I don't believe in it. He said, if I give an assignment and it's due at the beginning of class tomorrow and you don't turn it in, it's a zero. And if you don't come to class and you haven't let me know why, it's a zero. He said, that's just my policy. And it's been like that ever since I've been here. So like I said, everybody's different. So we will be through chapter nine by next week and you will have your test. If I give it out on Thursday, it'll be due Sunday. So next week, Sunday, not this week, but next week, the 24th, all your chapter eight and nine written tests, Halloween Superstore and Shape Up will be due for eight and nine. Then, like I said, the following week, you can probably look at, we're going to do this, not, not like this, but still fairly quickly. I'm going to guess that like maybe on Monday, we'll do 11, 12, and 13. Tuesday, we'll do 14 and 15. Then we'll have Wednesday and Thursday where we'll go over some bootstrap. Then the last week, we'll do 16, 17, and 18. And then we'll do some more bootstrap. All right, just so you again, so you've got an idea of what's coming up. Today is day 14. Since we were off that last Monday for Labor Day, basically it's just about three weeks in. I want to make sure by the time we're six weeks in, meaning we'll have 10 weeks left, approximately 50 days, that's all going to be spent on JavaScript. All right, for, for the majority of you in this class, this is your first foray, so to speak into programming all right and we have found that doing it this way that if we spend about 30 days on css html and bootstrap and about 50 days on javascript it works best we originally gave each one 40 days and, and there wasn't enough time to cover javascript all right so you've got all that stuff in there that's really all I have for the rest of the day. And with that, I wish you a good weekend and I will talk to all of you on Monday. Again, have a nice weekend.